Spending 12 months living and working in Antarctica would hold little appeal for many of us, but that's exactly what one young Victorian woman's about to do. Also, some, uh, some fire lighters, because it could get a bit chilly in the old uh, igloo. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, could you please welcome Rachel Robertson. To be chosen by the Australian Government to lead an expedition to Antarctica was a real honour. What I know now, that I didn't know then, that I'd have an interview for the role of station leader. They have a week-long boot camp. It was here at our fire training in Hobart before we'd even left for Antarctica. And we're on our hands and knees in this smoke-filled shipping container. And it was real smoke, real flames, pitch black. We had to crawl through the dark with an oxygen tank on our back and breathing apparatus. And I honestly just wanted to get up and run away right there and then. But then I realised, you know, I was the leader of the expedition. And I, I couldn't ask these 17 men and women to trust me with their lives in Antarctica if I fell at the first hurdle in Hobart. And this is home. This is where we lived for 12 months. Davis. I'm not an explorer. I'm not an adventurer. I'm not Kay Cotty. Uh, I'm not Jessica Watson. I'm not climbing Everest like Bridget Muir. Actually, I'm more Bridget Jones than Bridget <laughs> Muir. You physically can't get out of Antarctica in winter. It's impossible. One of the uh, challenges for me as the leader was bringing together a very diverse group of people and getting them functioning as a team. We had to at least work together, you know, because our lives depended on it. The sexual tension was so big, but so unspoken, you know, like an elephant in the room. This is our bachelors and spinsters ball. From May till August, we can't go outside. It's pitch black. So there's nothing going on outside, so the focus becomes in here, on us. So if we don't have something to look forward to in the next week or two, we start picking on each other. I've noticed there's a few women here this morning, so I'm going to point out for the, the ladies in particular, that's me in the green satin dress. That is not my green satin dress. <laughs> I found it in a dress-up box down there. I just, I just wouldn't want a single one of you walking out of here <laughs> thinking, why would that woman pack a green satin dress to go to Antarctica? <laughs> but it really came home to me that my behaviour was being scrutinised in a way that I hadn't even imagined, hadn't even entered my head. And, you know, things I was doing and saying and where I sat for meals was being watched and, and interpreted. We had a plane crash uh, in December and a bolt sheared off the nose landing gear of the CASA 212 and stranded four of my people 500 kilometres away on a glacier. Whatever that tough time is, or that challenging time is, the rules are exactly the same for the leader. Because I knew that people were watching me. I knew my community were watching me to see whether they should be worried or anxious. Were there times where you wanted to go home? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there were times we all wanted to go home. But one of the ways that I built up my own resilience was to focus on the things I had rather than the things I'd given up. Yeah, but the women of Antarctica have a saying that the odds are good, but the goods are odd. <laughs> <laughs> so I will leave you on that note. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me and please enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. It was inspirational. It was fantastic. We really enjoyed it. Very inspirational.